What are the Paralympic Games? Founded by Dr. Ludwig Gutwin in 1948, the word Paralympics is a combination of the Greek para, meaning beside, and the word Olympics. This name was chosen to show that the Paralympic Games exist alongside the Olympic Games as an elite sporting event for athletes with a disability. With 4,280 athletes from 164 different countries competing in the 2012 London Paralympic Games, the Paralympics are about half the size of the Olympic Games. However, the size of an elite sporting event does not necessarily determine the scope of its audience. The accumulated television audience for the London 2012 Paralympics was 3.8 billion people, only 0.2 billion people shy of the predicted number of viewers for the London Olympics. With a substantial audience and the goal of being equal to the Olympic Games, one would think that the Paralympic Games would be well covered by the media, especially since in 2003, buying broadcasting rights to the Olympic Games also buys you the broadcasting rights to the Paralympics. But when NBC, the sole proprietor of the broadcasting rights to the 2012 Olympics and Paralympics in America, covered the Summer Games in London, they broadcast the Olympic Games but shown only a 90-minute summary of the Paralympic Games, one week after the closing ceremony. Regardless of the type of sport being played, sport depends on the media to provide consumers with information. This symbiotic relationship between sport and media gives legitimacy to sport and provides capital for the media. As an elite sporting event, the Paralympics should provide ample capital for the media to report on. However, in America and many other countries, the games are given scant television time and are only written about in the news social sections at best. Why? One of the main reasons is that we as a society have a narrow view of disability. In a Polish study comparing the popularity of the less successful but more popular Polish Olympic team to the less popular but more successful Paralympic and Polish gliding teams, the author postulated that the value of a sport has less to do with the success or victory of its athletes and more to do with its symbolic meaning within society meaning that we value athletes less for their athletic ability and more for the things that they represent, such as physicality, masculinity, and sexuality, not things generally associated with disability. Because of this, Paralympic athletes find themselves in the paradox of elite disability sport. They are at once fascinating because of their accomplishments and at the same time repulsive because of their disability. Ironically, one of the largest influencers of disability symbolic meaning within society is the media. A 1982 literature review by Elliot and Bird looked at the portrayal of disability in literature, film, and television. Their findings showed that in literature, particularly books and comics, disabilities were used as an outward reflection of an inward corruption or used as a mechanism for producing moral good within a character. Film showed a clear bias towards the more bizarre symptoms of mental illness, and television tended to depict individuals with disability as young, asexual, abused persons poorly adjusted to society and with limited social mobility. Stereotypes propagated by the media reflect what is known as the medical model of disability. Under the medical model, individuals with disability are seen as deviant, not measuring up to the norm, and thus are to be pitied, fixed, or feared. The medical model stems from society's preoccupation with able-bodiedness, meaning that we value certain types of bodies over others. In media, this is seen as a traditional presentation of disability sport. An athlete's accomplishments are overshadowed by their disability, how they had to overcome their own personal tragedy before they could succeed in sport. In contrast, the progressive presentation of disability sport highlights the athlete's achievements first, their disability still present, but only a part of their story. A 2010 study by Corrigan, Peyton, Holt, and Hardin examining the media coverage surrounding the South African sprinter Oscar Pistorius sheds light on exactly how ableism limits the conversations surrounding disability sport. When Oscar Pistorius challenged the rule that disqualified him from competing for a place in the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games due to his use of prosthetic legs, the media exploded with conversations regarding what an athlete should look like. Their research uncovered four themes regarding social assumptions about disability in elite sport. The first theme researchers found was that the media often painted Pistorius as too abled, elevating him to an entirely different level of athlete and thus a dangerous deviant that threatened the concept of a level playing field inherent in sport. Secondly, how Pistorius' legs were described largely influenced how deviant to athletic norms he appeared. 
Articles that described his prostheses as a technological breakthrough emphasized his differences as an athlete, whereas articles that used bodily metaphors provided a more critical reflection of sporting bodies. The third team censored around how able-bodied norms were the standards against which Pistorius was measured. True to the medical model and traditional presentation method, the ability of Pistorius to conform to these norms was the basis for determining fairness. Lastly, the fourth theme expressed a general fear of biological deviance. Would Pistorius' prosthetics be dangerous to competitors? Would the future be dominated by cyborg athletes? Would self-mutilation become the new performance-enhancing drug? These types of questions took away from Pistorius' legitimacy as an athlete by defining him by his differences rather than by his ability. In conclusion, researchers stated that the too abled label reinforces body hierarchies rather than challenging them. It is not that Pistorius was too fast or too talented, it was that he, like other athletes with a disability, is too different. Athletes with disabilities, and by extension the Paralympics, are simply too different for the media to cover seriously. A study by Golden in 2003 looked at dissimilar coverage in the 2002 Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games, and while interviewing journalists, found some very candid reasons why the Paralympics received less coverage than the Olympics. The Paralympians can't compete on the same level as Olympic athletes, so it's a bone they throw them to make them feel better. It's not a real competition, and I for one don't see why I should have to cover it. It's like the WNBA. The women can't compete on the same level as men, so they give them their own league, but it hasn't really caught on. This comment embodies the cumulative attitudes of our society. A limited view of disability leads to a preoccupation with able-bodiedness, which in turn makes elite disabled athletes too different to be taken seriously. Thus, the media chooses not to cover the Paralympic Games, not because they are uninteresting, but because we as a society have deemed individuals with a disability as unworthy of our equal attention. So how do we change this? The answer isn't simple. Studies suggest that a grassroots movement must take place before disability, athletes with a disability, and the Paralympics are accepted within wider society. Media reporters must be educated in the more progressive framing of disability and moreover need to be exposed to disability sport. Golden's study of the 2002 Winter Games also interviewed journalists who were reporting on the Paralympics. A recurring theme among these journalists was previous exposure to the Paralympic Games. One reporter says, There was a big reaction in the Mexican public after we had a lot of coverage of the Sydney Paralympics. That's why we're here. Additionally, a study found that the desire to raise disability awareness in their communities was another reason reporters were reporting on the Paralympic Games. In Japan, the disabled are not seen. They are in their apartments. They are alone. My editor wanted me to cover the Paralympics so that readers could learn more about them. He, the editor, covered the Paralympics in Nagano, and he feels strongly that it should be covered as a real competition. As informational gatekeepers, the media can change societal attitudes towards disability and disability sport. And that change in media can start right here. While very little research has been done on the effects of the internet and social media on societal attitudes toward disability, if viral videos are any indicator, it doesn't take much for an idea to gain momentum. With real 2016 right around the corner, take the time to learn more about the Paralympics and the Paralympic athletes. Toss out your old notions of disability and look for the value in everybody. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in to the Rio Paralympic Games September 7th to 18th, 2016.